guess what? This is Law and Order, season two, episode nine, Pixies. We open up and there's a couple of garbage men that are talking really New York-y. I like my mother-in-law just fine. It's the wife I can't stand. Huh. And when they pull the dumpster away from a building, there's a body of a young girl behind it. The one guy just goes, oh man, which sounds less like I just found a dead body and more like they ran out of my favorite bread at Subway. Emmy Warner is meeting Benson and Stabler at the body. The victim has a fresh gash on her arm, definitely post-mortem. She's been dead about 12 hours, looks like blunt force trauma to the head. Warner says she's probably anywhere between 12 years old and like 14. They speculate that she could be a sex worker, but she doesn't have track marks. But hang on, we've got more evidence here, including the murder weapon, which is a brick that looks just like a piece of fruitcake, some receipts and a charm bracelet in the pocket. There's no ID, but one of the receipts is for an expensive pair of running shoes. Stabler says, you know what? We have 14 other open rape cases in front of this one. So we're gonna hand it off to homicide. No such luck because there are fluids present with bruising that indicates that she was not only raped, but spanked. We're back at the precinct and we're going over the information with Cragen. Recent sex, but she's definitely a non-consenting minor. So it's either statutory or rape one. Well, the blood on the brick means it wasn't a dump job. Somebody saw something. Cragen starts handing out orders. Benson and Stabler, you go follow up on receipts and forensics. Munch and Finn, you start knocking door to door. We jump to an apartment building and this tiny little Greek lady opens up and says, I don't know anything. That is a very slick way to handle the cops coming to your door. She's clearly super jaded because she says, what do I care if another sex worker is dead? Uh, we care, a bitch. And she was just a kid. So are you sure you didn't see or hear anything because I can see right down to where her body was from your window. She doesn't want to spill. So Munch starts cursing her in Greek. You would curse me until the day I die. So she caves. Yeah. At around 830, she heard somebody yell, whore. They leave and close the door and Finn has stars in his eyes for Munch. You talk in Greek, you're full of surprises. I'm just trying to keep some mystery so that you don't get bored and stop loving me. Benson and Stabler head to the shoe store to check out that receipt. And Benson walks in and is like incredulous that a pair of shoes could cost over a hundred dollars. You just wait for 2022 when there's a supply chain shortage, you're gonna shit yourself. They ask a very busy looking 19 year old if he knows the girl in the picture. She looks dead. He, she is. He doesn't remember anything, but Benson gets a phone call. All right, we'll be there. Warner's done cutting. They head in to check out the victim's body. Warner confirms, yeah, it was a head injury that killed her. But the good news, I guess, was that your perp was a secretor, which will really help narrow it down. Lots of healed fractures to her wrists and fingers. Her ribs have fractured and healed. Prolonged abuse. Any drugs in the system? No, only the active ingredients and laxatives. And there's also erosion on her incisors. Self-induced vomiting, she was bulimic. Her palms were really rough, like a day laborer. She worked for somebody. Munch and Finn are running down the sex worker lead. They talk to a madam on her way into church, and it's a dead end. She does not work with underage girls. They check with some pervy video guy. It's hard to tell what was written into this role and what was just this guy taking creative license because he really pervs it up. They hand him a picture of the victim. Do you know her? Starts in the picture's mouth. Finn snatches it back. You're gonna make me smack you. And as they're talking to him, he nonchalantly waves a guy off, but they're too slick. They notice and grab that motherfucker before he leaves. What's the video that he had rented and was trying to return? Yup, it was child sex abuse material. Gross. So we bring this asshole in. He still doesn't know her, but it's okay because they're taking him down. You give us the names of all of your pedophile customers and we won't hop on a bullhorn and announce to the entire prison that you are a pedophile. How about that? But Cragen pulls him out because they think they've identified the Vic. A missing persons report had just come in for Carla Bryce. Benson and Stabler head over to the Bryce residence and they're talking to the mom who is 
be up. When was the last time you saw your daughter? It was four days ago. Does your daughter wear jewelry? Yeah, she has a cross necklace that her grandma gave her. Does she play any sports? Yeah, she runs track. Why? Mrs. Bryce, has somebody been hurting your daughter? And she breaks down. Tried to get away from her ex-husband, but he found them. Carla tried to step in and he hit her, so Carla took off. Let me see her. They take her down to identify the body. Warner pulls back the sheet. <gasps> That's not my Carla. We're all so damn relieved for her, but also we're back to square one. What else do we have? What about that bracelet? Well, there's two sets of prints on it. The lab's working on them. The charm bracelet itself has a bunch of teddy bears with real fucking diamonds in it. It also says, all my love, Poppy. Munch knows a jewelry guy, of course he does. The jeweler dude is being a big old nerd about it. <laughs> Do you see the W on the paw? That signature is Emil Wollerstein, and he only works for one place anymore. Check there. Meanwhile, Benson and Stabler are gonna try and cast a wider net for a missing person. There's a whole bunch of non-matches, and then bing! Oh, here's one that's new for a 16 year old. Well, our victim's like 12 to 14, but damn, the description is spot on. Her name is Christy Meyerson, and she was last seen leaving gymnastics practice. Gymnastics! They head to the athletic club and it's filled with a whole bunch of small girls that are just getting mentally and physically abused by their coach. Stabler's listening to him be such a dick. Aren't you a little hard on them? I push them because I love them. They're talking to Coach Korska and we find out that Christy's parents live in Oregon and they signed over her guardianship to Coach Korska because they couldn't afford to move up with her. Christy was living with a different family whose daughter was also part of the gymnastics program and this guy sucks. He doesn't even care that she's dead. She had so much potential and now it's wasted and I'm not buying his accent. Is it like, Russian? Is it Venezuelan or something? Benson and Stabler head over to talk to the mom that was housing Christy. The last time that she saw Christy was the night that she died. She went out for a run. She goes out for a run every single night with Lori, another gymnast. Did she have any boyfriends? No, gymnastics was her life. Did she ever mention somebody named Poppy? The fuck? No? What was her relationship with the coach? Oh, she loved him and she feared him. She was really grateful to be on the team. Benson is talking one-on-one -on -one to Hannah, the little sister of the family. Okay, sweetie, can you tell me, did she ever talk about somebody named Poppy? Yeah, I heard her on the phone once. She was telling Poppy that she would meet him after running. Let's go talk to Lori, the running mate, to see if she knows Poppy. But she doesn't have any fucking clue. We run every night, but Monday night, she never showed up. Lori, do you know Poppy? N no. Quick detour to Stabler's house, Maureen's freaking out and being annoyed. Back at the precinct, what the fuck is up with this coach, Korska? Cregan wants to look into him. Well, he defected from Bulgaria. Bulgarian, that's what that accent's supposed to be. Crazy successful coach, but he has no priors. Oh, but Munch and Finn, they traced that bracelet back to the person who custom ordered it. This dude's name is Kyle Hubert, 42 years old, rich as fuck. Stabler's like, hang on, I know that name. Flip, 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 flip. He contributed a butt ton of money to Korska's gymnastics thing. <laughs> Looks like we found Poppy. Benson and Stabler track him down. We get a good look in his apartment and it is covered in framed photographs of Christy. Kyle Hubert himself is a Stiff looking dude with a Mark Zuckerberg haircut. Okay, Hubie, tell us about that bracelet. Oh, Poppy was her nickname for me. When did he give her the bracelet? Monday morning. Right, okay, you were sleeping together, weren't you? No. Also, I'm not gonna take a blood test because that's infringing on my rights. That is suspicious fuck. Let's go talk to the other gymnasts and get a feel for this Hubert guy. Oh yeah, he's gross as fuck. He stares at us when we're practicing. He gave one girl lotion and said, think of me when you use it. General consensus is that he's a big old creepy freak fest. But guess what? Creepy Hubie has an additional address and it's right on the route that Christy and Lori would run. 
let's go check it out. Before they head in, the apartment manager says, yeah, I saw that girl leaving and crying on Monday night. Munt shows up with the search warrant and they bust in. So gross. This whole place is designed to look like a little child's bedroom, complete with unicorns painted on the wall and a bed full of teddy bears and child sex abuse material and dirty sheets. So they take the DNA off of those sheets and compare it to the DNA that was left in the victim. We have a match. They've got Hubie in an interrogation room. Okay, listen, motherfucker, you're going to jail. The question is just, for how long? And just when they're about to really slap the bangs off of his face, he drops a bombshell. Christy was 19. Follow it up with the birth certificate and sure enough, she's 19 years old. So it's gross, but not illegal. Benson's like, these girls, they stop eating to make weight. And then the weight loss stops their cycle. And without their cycle, they can't menstruate. And then without menstruation, there's no estrogen. And they can't develop correctly. So they look like 12 year old girls when they're fucking 19. And then fucking creepers like Hubie prey on them. But the prints from the bracelet, they're back. Not Hubie's Corsicas. That fucking motherfucker. He's not at the gym. Lori, the running buddy, she is at the gym. She finally admits the coach said he couldn't trust Christy and he promised her that if she told on Christy, he would give her her spot on the team. When I told coach on Monday that Christy was sleeping with Hubie, he went to find her. Benson and Stabler turn around and there's Corch Corch Corsco. And there's Coach Corsco. Okay, fine. I went to the apartment, grabbed her wrist, and told her she better break up with that motherfucker or she was off the team. She went in, broke up with Hubie, and came out crying. And so I dropped that little whore off for her run. She was distraught, and you made her go for her run. I'm not paid to teach weakness. What time was this at? 8.15. A street vendor confirms that, yeah, he saw the girls running together on Monday night, even though Lori said she didn't see her on Monday. Cut to the alley a couple hours later. Saber's got on this cute little newsies hat. He looks like he's in a fucking period drama. Sure enough, here comes Lori running by. Lori, we've got a question for you. You said that Huey gave Christy that bracelet? Yeah, he gave her lots of gifts. If you didn't see her that day, how did you know about the bracelet? Uh, fine. If you want me to say I'm sad that she's dead, I won't. Everybody loved her. Everything came so easy to her. And with Korska still letting her be on the team, there was no room for Lori. We started arguing and I don't know how the brick even left my hand. So she is gonna be indicted. But we're left feeling like this is super fucking unfair because in the last scene, we're back at the gym. Benson and Stabler go to tell Korska that Lori confessed, but she wants to see him. He's like, Lori is trash. I will see her when I fucking feel like seeing her. I'm just a horrible person that gets celebrated by society even though I abuse little girls because I am good with sports. So everything is fucked. Dick Wolf. And that was Law & Order SVU Season 2 Episode 9. Jum jum. <laughs>